Tene Brahma Hidaya Adika Baye Muyantiya Tsuraya Tejo Vari Medam Yata Vini Mayo Yatra Trisargo Mesha Damna Srina Sada Niras the Kuhakam Satyam Param Dimahi O oh my Lord, Sri Krishna, son of Vasudeva. O oh, all-pervading personality of Godhead, I offer my respectful obeisances unto you. I meditate upon Lord Sri Krishna because he is the absolute truth. And the primary cause of all causes of the creation, sustenance, and destruction of manifested universe. He is directly and indirectly conscious of all manifestations. And he is independent because there is no other cause beyond him. It is he only who first imparted the Vedic knowledge unto the heart of Brahmaji. The original living being. By him, even the great sages and demigods are placed in illusion. As one is bewildered by the illusory representations of water seen in fire or land seen on water, only because of him do the material universes, temporarily manifested by the reactions of the three modes of nature, appear factual, although they are unreal. I therefore meditate upon him, Lord Sri Krishna who is eternally existent in the transcendental abode, which is forever free from the illusory representations in the material world. I meditate upon him, for he is the absolute truth. Dharma Pujita Kaitravutra Paramo Nimatsaranam Satam Vedyam Vastavam Atra Vastu Shivadam tapa trayon mulan. Shivadam tapa. Shivadam tapa. Mahamuni kute. Kimba purir ishwaraha. Kimba purir. Sadyo hiti aburuti te tra. Kuti bihi susu subistakshanat. Completely rejecting all religious activities which are materially motivated. This Bhagavata Purana propounds the highest truth which is understandable by those devotees who are fully pure in heart. The highest truth is reality distinguished from illusion for the welfare of all. Such truth uproots the threefold mysteries. This beautiful Bhagavatam compiled by the great sage Vyasadeva in his maturity is sufficient in itself for God realization. What is the need of any other scripture? As soon as one attentively and submissively hears the message of Bhagavatam by this culture of knowledge, the Supreme Lord is established within his heart. Ikama kalpataroga litam falam sukamokad amrita dravya samyutam Pibata Bhagavatam Rasam Alayam Muhur Ahoratska Bhuvibhavukaha. O expert and thoughtful men, relish Srimad Bhagavatam, the mature fruit of the desire tree of Vedic literatures. It emanated from the lips of Sri Sugadeva Goswami. Therefore, this fruit has become even more tasteful. Although its nectarian juice was already relishable for all, including liberated souls. Shinvatam Swakata Krishna Punya Shravana Kirtana Pediantakstohi Abhadrani Vidunati Srihitsatam to hear about Krishna from Vedic literatures, 
or to hear from him directly through the Bhagavad Gita? Is it self-righteous activity? And for one who hears about Krishna, Lord Krishna, who is dwelling in everyone's heart, acts as a best-wishing friend and purifies the devotee who constantly engages in hearing of him. Nasta preesu bhadresu nityam bhagavata sevaya bhagavati uttama sloke bhaktir bhavati naistiki In this way, a devotee naturally develops his dormant transcendental knowledge. As he hears more about Krishna from the Bhagavatam and from the devotees, he becomes fixed in the devotional service of the Lord. Tadarajas tamo bhava, kamalo vadayas chaye, chete tare navidam, stifam satve prasiddhati. By development of devotional service, one becomes freed from the modes of passion and ignorance. And thus, material lusts and avarice are diminished. Evam prasana manaso bhagavat bhakti yogataha bhagavat tattva vigyanam mukta sangasya jayate when these impurities are wiped away, the candidate remains steady in his position of pure goodness, becomes enlivened by devotional service, and understands the science of God perfectly. Vidyate hudaya grantis chidyante sarvasamsaya Shiyante Jashikaramani Drista Evat Manishwari Thus Bhakti Yoga serves the hard knot of material affection and enables one to come at once to the stage of a Samsayam Samagran. Understanding of the Supreme Absolute Truth Personality of Godhead. Shimad Bhagavatam, Canto 1, Chapter 15, Verse Number 46. Te sadhu pita sarvatra rakta yatvat yantikam atmana manasa darayam asur Vaikuntha Charanam Bhujam. Translation by Srila Prabhupada. They all had performed all the principles of religion and as a result, rightly decided that the lotus feet of Lord Sri Krishna are the supreme goal of all. Therefore, they meditated upon his feet without interruption. Report by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada. In the Bhagavad Gita 728, the Lord says that only those who have done pious deeds in previous lives and have become freed from the results of all impious acts can concentrate upon the lowest lotus feet of the Supreme Lord Sri Krishna. The Pandavas, not only in this life, but also in their previous lives, had always performed supreme pious work, and thus they are ever free from all the reactions of impious work. It is quite reasonable, therefore, that they concentrated their minds upon the lotus feet of the Supreme Lord, Sri Krishna. According to Sri Viswanatha Chakravarti, Dharma, Artha, Kama, and Moksha principles are accepted by persons who are not free from the results of impious actions. Such persons affected with the contaminations of the above four principles cannot at once accept the lotus feet of the Lord in the spiritual sky. 
The Vaikuntha world is situated far beyond the material sky. The material sky is under the management of Durga Devi, or the material energy of the Lord. But the Vaikuntha world is managed by the personal energy of the Lord. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. <clears throat> this is uh, very important information. It says that, uh, that the uh, Pandavas and Maharaj Yudhisthira rightly decided that the lotus feet of the Lord Sri Krishna are the supreme goal of all. And this is directly a verse from the Rig Veda, which says, Om Tat Vishnu Paramam Padam Satapasyanti Surayo. All the, the suras, or the pious persons, the demigods, they understand that the ultimate goal of all spiritual activity is to take refuge at the lotus feet of the Lord. Padam Padam. Padam Padam. The supreme feet of the Lord. <clears throat> so, uh, having performed all the principles of religion, and as a result, they rightly decided that the lotus feet of Lord Sri Krishna are the supreme goal of all. So, we can see that most people don't come to this conclusion. They know something about God, Many, everybody knows something about God. Everyone has some concept of God. But to surrender at the lotus feet of the Lord, knowing who the Lord actually is, Ishwara Parama Krishna, Satchitananda Vigra, Anadiradir Govinda Sarva Karana Karanam, the cause of all causes, <clears throat> is, is Krishna. Everything is coming originally from Him. Itadyonini Bhutani Savanitu Padaraya. There's no truth superior to the Lord. That's the Bhagavad Gita, seventh chapter, where it says, There's no o, o Dhananjaya or, or uh, Arjuna. There's no truth superior to me. Everything rests upon me as pearls are strung on a thread. So when you see the pearl necklace, you don't see the thread. But obviously it's there, otherwise the pearls wouldn't stay in that uniform way. So understanding Krishna as a person who is possessor of all opulences, uh, wealth, beauty, fame, knowledge, power, renunciation, there's no one equal to him or greater than him. In fact, it says, Vedaham itam purusham mahantam aditya varanam tamasa parastat tam eva vidit bati mutyum eti nanya panta vidyate yanaya yasmat param na param asti kinchit yasmin nan yo no jayo sti kinchit brikshe eva stabdo Divi tistat yikas tenedam purnam purushena sarvam. I know that Supreme Personality Godhead, who is transcendental to all material conceptions of darkness, only he who knows him can transcend the bonds of birth and death. There is no way for liberation other than this knowledge of that Supreme Person. There is no truth superior to that Supreme Person because he is the supermost. He is smaller than the smallest, and he is greater than the greatest. He is situated in a silent tree, and he illumines the transcendental sky. And as a tree spreads its roots, he spreads his extensive energies. So Prabhupada says that from uh, these verses, these are two verses from the Svatasvatar Upanishad, third chapter, eighth and ninth verse, one should conclude from these uh, verses that the Supreme Absolute Truth is the Supreme Personality of God who is all-pervading by his multi-energies, both material and spiritual. So, 
Understanding Krishna as a person is a rare thing. Most people don't come to that conclusion. Manushyanam sastri sukhasya jati siddhaye jatatam apisiddhanam kashit maam vititatvataha. Out of many thousands and thousands of people, one may try for perfection. And out of many thousands and millions of those who have attained perfection, only one will know me in truth. So to understand who Krishna is in truth and come to the conclusion I should surrender completely at his lotus feet, take shelter of his lotus feet, and serve him with love and devotion as my primary goal in life, that's a very rare thing. Because people are bewildered, just like yesterday we heard how much people are bewildered by the flowery words of the Vedas. Although they're following the Vedas, but yet they don't really understand the goal of the Vedas. So therefore it says, Ya Imam Pushpitam Bacham. One second, let me see that verse. Hmm, where is that verse? Ya imam pushpitam vacham pravadanti avipaschitaha Vedavada rata nanya Vedavada rata parata nanya astiti vajina So these Vedavada ratas, these are people who study the Vedas, but they don't really understand them. They're bewildered by the flowery words of the Vedas, which recommend fruit of activities for elevation of heavenly planets, having good birth, power, and nice body, and all opportunities for sense gratification. So when they want such sense gratification on heavenly planets and opulent life, they say that there's nothing more than this. That's the problem with the mode of goodness and following the Varnashram system without understanding that there's something greater than that. Varnashram system is just the stepping steps to come closer to the absolute truth. But just Maintaining the, the Varnashram system is not the absolute truth. The absolute truth is surrendering to Krishna. Some Siddhir Haritoshanam, the perfection of life, is to please the Lord by surrendering to Him. So, therefore, Ugaishvarya Pasakta Nam Tayaparata Chaitasam Vivasat Mika Bhuti Samadona Vidyate. In the minds of those who are too much attracted, or attached to sense enjoyment and material opulence, and who are bewildered by such things, the resolute determination for devotional service to the Supreme Lord does not take place. So many people will get stuck in the Varnashram system because they're not hearing the uh, Bhagavad Gita and Bhagavatam regularly spoken by pure devotees. So. There's one line that we're not saying every day. It's not part of the verses uh, that we recite, beginning with Srinvata, Swakita, Krishna, but it's, it should be recited also. It says, therefore, only by hearing from Krishna or from his devotee in Krishna consciousness can one understand the science of Krishna. This should be a daily thing. In fact, in the 11th canto, 20th chapter, Eighth verse, he says, If one is attracted to talks about me, Krishna says, and has uh, faith in the instructions that I set forth in the Bhagavad Gita, and if one is neither falsely detached from material things or very much attracted, to uh, material existence uh, and has not uh, love for me 
uh, that is awakened. Uh, he, he does not have love for me uh, that is awakened by performing devotional service. So in other words, it's possible to, to do devotional service. Varnasram system teaches people to be engaged in devotional service, but uh, not achieve the goal of spiritual life. So it says, he who is not attracted to talks about me. Well, that's why this last line, therefore only by hearing from Krishna or from his devotee in Krishna consciousness can one understand the science of Krishna. If one is not attracted to doing that on a regular basis, it's possible to be engaged in devotional service and not attain the goal of Krishna consciousness, which is pure love and devotion to the Lord. So this hearing process is very important uh, to rise above the influence and the modes of material nature and become free of all inauspicious things in the heart. So therefore, uh, in 1836, Srimad Bhagavatam, 1st Canto 8, Chapter 36, it says, hearing from the right source is shravanam. So, this is extremely important because hearing from the wrong source is not shravanam or hearing. It's getting contaminated. So that's the point. What are we going to hear on a ba uh, regular basis? Well, we have Prabhupada's tapes. Imagine if there is one tape of Muhammad speaking or one tape of Jesus speaking. You know how valuable that would be? Right? But we have more than 3,000 tapes of Prabhupada. More than 3,000 tapes of Prabhupada, who's on the same level or even greater than Muhammad or Jesus. But yet, are we listening to them? Well, yeah, this, we do listen to them somewhat. But is it... Uh, what's called ardent, ardent listening or effective listening or intense listening. No, usually it's not. We'll have the, the tape recorder going while we're in the kitchen working. You don't really understand anything. You have the tape recorder going in your car while you're driving. Yeah, you understand maybe a little bit. But that's not focused hearing. Focused hearing is coming like this early in the morning or after work, sitting down without any noise, without, ch without children running around, and without people talking like that. And just focused hearing and engaging in the hearing by asking questions and uh, asking clarifications and so forth. And then going back home and thinking about it. And in that way, your mind is always engaged in Krishna consciousness. This hearing process is absolutely important. That's why it says, Shravanam, Kirtanam, Vishnu. It, begin, it doesn't say, Archanam, Vandanam. No, it says, Shravanam, Kirtanam, Vishnu. That's the beginning. Those are the most important parts of those nine processes. They're all important, but, it, but the order of or the priority of importance is given to shravanam, kirtanam, hearing and repeating or chanting. So, therefore, Sridhar Swami in the uh, Rudra Sampradaya, who Prabhupada quotes many, many times throughout all his, all his purports, and Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur also, he says, Dharma Artha Kama Moksha, or fruitive activities. In other words, they're activities that you're expecting a result from. Philosophical speculations and salvation, as conceived by several persons, are not the ultimate goal of life. They are more or less practiced by persons who have no information of the ultimate goal of life. The ultimate goal of life is already indicated by the Lord himself in the Bhagavad Gita, 1864. So <laughs> we discussed this yesterday, but we'll go over it again because it's very important. What Prabhupada says, 
It's, it's discussed in 18 says, Sarvaguya tamam buya, Srinu me paramam vacha. So this Srinu me paramam vacha, what does that mean? It means, because you're my very dear friend, I am speaking to you, my supreme instruction, which is Bhagavad Gita. Krishna is saying that to Arjuna. I am speaking to you. Srinu me means listen to me. Paramam vacha, because this is the supreme instruction, the supreme uh, philosophy of life. Isto si me judami ti tato vaksyami tehitam. This is the most confidential knowledge of all. Hear this from me, for it is for your benefit. So that's what we should do every day, at least twice a day. Hear this knowledge of Bhagavad Gita, just like 11th Canto, I quoted 20th, 20th chapter, I verse, quoted that verse that uh, Krishna speaks himself. So this is, uh, what is the goal then? Always think of me, become my devotee, worship me, and offer your homage, respect, or love to me. Thus you will come to me without fail. I promise you this because you are my very dear friend. And therefore, uh, Arjuna abandon all varieties of religion and just surrender unto me. I shall deliver you from all sinful reactions. Do not fear. Shouldn't we do this? Yes. Shouldn't we teach our kids to do this? Yes. Instead of saying, you got to do better in your studies. You got to get into Harvard. You got to go to Stanford. You got to go to MIT. You got to get a job in IT and you got to learn the this uh, robotics and you got to learn wait a minute is that going to save them at the moment of death right no what's going to save everybody at the moment of death is surrendering completely to krishna sarva dharma this is the ultimate message of the lord give up all other dharmas and just surrender unto me and only me mommy come i'll free you from all sinful reactions Moksishami masucha. Masucha means don't worry about anything. Don't hesitate. Don't be in anxiety. Don't fear. Just do this. So this is Krishna's ultimate message. And unless we get this clear in our mind, we will mislead ourselves and mislead others. Okay. What is going to save a person at the moment of death? Is it programming that's going to save somebody? <laughs> if anything, uh, it diverts your attention. Now, does that mean we shouldn't work honestly? No, you sh we should all work honestly. But it doesn't mean that if you don't know how to program or you don't know robotics, you you're going to be a failure in life. That's not a fact. It's not a fact at all. For millions of years, people have lived without programming and robotics. Did they die? No, in fact, they did better than us. They had bigger families, more kids, more prosperity, more peace, more happiness. <laughs> not, not that that's the goal of life, but to show you that, at least in Satya Yuga, nobody was interested in robotics. Nobody was interested in programming. There were no factories. Everything was based on... Uh, land stewardship, protection of cows, and study of the scriptures, and preaching, and chanting, and having festivals. And nature was cooperating. Uh, there was no, you know, floods and earthquakes and uh, uh, war and things like that. Everyone was in a mode of goodness. It was a wonderful time to make spiritual advancement. It's a wonderful time to make spiritual advancement today also. Because of the Harinam Sankirtan, the movement of Lord Chaitanya. So we should fix our priority in life. Otherwise, we're going to be misleading ourselves and misleading others. You know, what it, you know how dangerous it is to mislead another person? It means that you're going to go to hell. 
by giving false information to people and misleading them is very dangerous. I know one person who was in his kind of guru, and he was, he was a very nice person, a very dear friend of mine, but he gave some wrong information to someone. And that person died because of it. And this made such an impression on him, he gave up being a guru, he gave up uh, everything, he even gave up being an ISKCON, which is a mistake. And uh, because he got scared, he realized, my God, you know, I'm telling people to do certain things, and it led this guy, poor guy who I love, to die. So, you know, giving wrong information to someone is a great sinful act. It could be yourself, it could be your children, your your wife, your husband, your neighbor, giving bad, wrong information is very, very grave, uh, let's say, uh, sin. Let's say. So, what is the right information? Let's say you don't know how to program. Let's say you can't get a job in Microsoft. Let's say you can't make $180,000 a year. Does that mean you're a failure? No. If you're a good person, see, in material life, we build wealth. People accumulate wealth. In spiritual life, we accumulate character. There's a big difference between developing character than developing wealth. Character means if you see somebody's wallet in the street, you pick it up and return it to that person. That means you have character. It means you have, you're honest. But if you don't have character, then if you see somebody's wallet in the street, you just put it in your pocket and say, this is my lucky day. So are we going to, I remember uh, one time when I was a kid and, and some bigger guy was, was uh, beating up on me and I bit his hand and he started screaming and he got really upset and, and he complained to everyone that I, I wasn't being fair. <laughs> anyway, uh, I actually felt bad. I said, why did I bite his hand? You know, even though he was beating up on me, I shouldn't have bitten his hand. So it's not the right thing to do. Well, r right or wrong, sometimes we do things and we feel sorry for it. The worst thing we could do and the worst feeling of being sorry is avoiding Krishna consciousness. That's the worst mistake we could make in our life. Or... Knowing all about Krishna consciousness, even being initiated, but yet deviating, not actually taking it seriously. And therefore it says here, and then we, we, I'm going to repeat it every day from now on, therefore only by hearing from Krishna or from his devotee in Krishna consciousness can one understand the science of Krishna. Hare Krishna. All glories to Sila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Are there any questions? What? No, Krishna consciousness means regularly hearing and chanting. Shravanam, kirtanam. Right? And that leads to smaranam, remembering. Padasevanam, serving the lotus feet of the Lord. Uh, archanam, worshiping the Lord, Vandanam, praying to the Lord, making friendship with the Lord, surrendering everything to the Lord. But it all is sustained by Shravanam, Kirtanam, hearing and repeating. So if we don't regularly do the Shravanam, I mean, listening to the tape recorder while you're in the kitchen, it's, it's not really Shravanam. I mean, it is Shravanam and it isn't. Because I could ask you after you finish cutting up all the vegetables and cooking, did you remember anything from the lecture? You said, uh, uh, well, it was a nice lecture. Okay, can you tell me one thing that Prabhupada said? They, well, he said so many wonderful things. What, was, what did he talk about? He was talking about Krishna. Yeah, we know all that. But what, what specific thing did you learn from that lecture? Nothing. Because that's not actually hearing, right? So this, this hearing is... Uh, something deliberate and focused and reverent, reverent hearing. In fact, uh, let me see. 
There's a very nice quote about that. Does that answer your question? Without this hearing, you can go 25 years, 50 years, 100 years in Krishna consciousness and still not understand what the goal is. Although if someone asks you a question, you say, oh yeah, the goal is complete surrender to Krishna, love for Krishna, but did you attain it? You only can keep on that, let's say, steady track going toward Krishna by regular hearing and repeating and discussing. Matchita matkata pranak bodhiantas parasparam gatiantas chamam nityam tushyanticha ramanticha. The real happiness and satisfaction of a devotee is meeting other devotees and discussing Bhagavad Gita and Srimad Bhagavad and inspiring each other by uplifting thoughts. So, and uh, about this hearing, let's see, and then we'll stop. It says, yeah, there's so many quotes about hearing. Uh, in third chapter, 35th verse, it says, Duties on the spiritual platform and duties on the material platform may be different, but the principle of following the authorized direction is always good for the performer. When one is under the spell of the modes of material nature, one should follow the prescribed rules for his particular situation and should not imitate others. For example, a brahmana who is in the mode of goodness is nonviolent, whereas a chatra who is in the mode of passion is allowed to be violent. As such, for a chatri, it is better to be vanquished following the rules of violence than to imitate a brahmana who follows the principles of nonviolence. Everyone has to cleanse his heart by a gradual process, not abruptly. However, when one transcends the modes of material nature and is fully situated in Krishna consciousness, he can perform anything and everything under the direction of a bona fide spiritual master. Mm. Where was that? Three thirty five, three thirty. Okay. Uh, One second. Yeah, in the fourth chapter, twenty-sixth verse. It says, "Hearing is the basic principle for understanding, and therefore, the pure brahmacharya engages fully in Hare Namanu Kirtanam, chanting and hearing the glories of the Lord. He restrains himself from vibrations of material sounds." And his hearing is engaged in the transcendental sound vibration of Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. So this hearing and chanting is the most important thing in spiritual life. It should be done every day on a regular basis. Yeah, in the before, um, Robert mentioned about this verse, by the first line. In the Bhagavad Gita 7, mm -hmm. you will check on that verse. Very important verse in this connection, I think. People who have acted piously in this life mm -hmm. and in previous lives and whose sinful actions are completely eradicated are freed from the dualities of delusion and they engage themselves in my service with determination. Is that what you? Yeah. No problem. Where the Pope put it address. Oh, in, in 720, oh yeah, in Bhagavad Gita 728, the Lord says that only those who have done pious deeds in previous lives and have become freed from the results of impious acts can concentrate upon the lotus feet of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So the question here is, 
how do you become freed from all impious acts? And thus concentrate upon the lotus feet of the Lord. It's only by surrendering completely. It seems like he's referring to Pandavas where pious from life. It's not only piety. See, Arjuna was pious, right? But still he refused to follow Krishna's order. It's only when he completely surrendered and heard Bhagavad Gita spoken by Krishna. And at the end, he said, this is your real prashad, Krishna. You, you have cleared away all my doubts. By hearing you, now I am determined to follow every instruction you give me without any opposition. Actually, in that verse, both brothers will give the word. Give the verse. Yeah. Very nice that what he said. Explain about what we just I mean, the report is very, very adverse. Agatham Falcon. Yes. Yeah, he's talking about that? Yeah, yeah. 728. Yeah. So what do you want to say? Do you mind to read what Papa says? Those eligible for elevation to the transcendental position are mentioned in this verse. For those who are sinful, atheistic, foolish, and deceitful, it is very difficult to transcend the duality of desire and hate. Only those who have passed their lives in practicing the regulative principles of religion, who have acted piously, and who have conquered sinful reactions, can accept devotional service and gradually rise to the pure knowledge of the Supreme Personality of God. Whenever it says conquered sinful reactions, that means they completely surrendered. And completely surrendered to what? To the hearing process and serving under authority. Without being completely free of sins, one cannot, one, one will not attain the, the goal. And it has to be a sustainable thing. It's not that you were once completely freed of sins, but then you started, you know, playing around again. It has to be a continual, thing. and the only way it can be continual is regular hearing. And, and it has to be effective hearing. That is a watching. Yes. Yes, exactly. So, yes. So what are the them? Exactly. That watering process is this hearing. You, you're it's watering with nectar in your ears every day. And it's inspiring. So when you done for it, this person is But one must always engage in hearing, chanting, in order to put it in tree. Like you said, it's not that you you got it and then you start playing it out. No. So <laughs> you, you keep on listening, hearing it exactly. See this summarize the whole thing? Yes, uh, yes. And because that's a way to uh, protect. Uh, the, uh, the and sustain. Sustain, S sustain yeah. regulated devotional service. So here, uh, yes. Actually, Ninth chapter, verse one. It says, "Idam tu te guya tamam pravaksyami ala suive gyanam vigyanam saitam yajgatva moksha si subat." So he says, "Because you're my friend, you're never envious of me. I shall impart to you this most confidential knowledge and realization, knowing which you shall be relieved of the miseries." Of material existence. So, in part, meaning he's, he's going to speak it. It's all about hearing that. Yes. And one lecture, two lecture Papa said, like, Papa, he really is some kind of like, really screaming, like, you don't need to do anything, just hear. Just hear. Yes. Just yeah. And that's, therefore, it says, Srinume Vacham. So ninth chapter um, in seventh chapter first verse Mami part Mam Maya Shakta Manak Parta Yoga Nyunchan Madasraya Asam Sayam Samagram Mam Yata Yasani Tat Shri Nu. So he says, Now hear. Every time he said Yes, Tat Shri Nu. Shri Nu may. Tat Shri Nu. 
It's many, many times he's saying this throughout Bhagavad Gita. All right. Oh, glorious. There's a saying, you don't learn by talking, you learn by hearing. <laughs> Hari Bo. Oh, glorious to see the Prabhupada. It's amazing when, uh, just one simple point. Lord Krishna told Uduva, Uduva considered the most learned gentleman in the world, you know, because he's a good grass body. Also, very greedy body of Krishna. I believe in that one of her. But then Krishna told me, like Uduva, in his 11th camp, he said, Anything you've done before, anything here, just for everything. Now, here for Hari Bo. <laughs> Krishna tells Uduva. Yeah, Uduva, yeah. yeah. Everything that the goddess world is 